Good morning. morning. The mic is on and you can hear me, I take it? Good. Uh, Good morning and welcome to worship this morning and happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. Um, I don't know of any particular announcements except that I would like to mention, um, I I was reminded on the board and of course I was the one doing it on Friday, uh, we have started services up at, at Snyder Village, uh, the third Friday of every month, and Pastor Gallagher and I have been rotating back and forth doing that, and, and um, Karen Watt and Myra Lance were up yesterday uh, providing music, and so I would just welcome anybody. If third Friday at 9.30 in the morning, we are having services up at um, just a brief service and a communion service for for the people at Snyder, and it's just, it's just really kind of neat. It's very well received, and we don't have a lot of people yet, but um, I think that'll come, and others are invited. Um, so I think that's about all I have. Why don't we uh, take a, just take a minute and welcome those around you. Okay, our, uh, our first hymn this morning is uh, entitled Rise, Shine, You People. And so I think maybe it might be a good thing if we rose and shine for the hymn. That's uh, hymn 825. <laughs>
We come into worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor and miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. I am heartily sorry for you and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you for the boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of our beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious as a poor man. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our intro this morning, let's read together Psalm 63, verses 3 to 7. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and the signs of the Lord. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all we hear him. Glory be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, in the word of your apostles and prophets, you have proclaimed to us your saving will. Grant us faith to believe your promises that we may re receive eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter. The people of Israel set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord God had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of God. Be the epistle lesson is from the book of Romans, the fifth chapter. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. <clears throat> Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God. And the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Thank you, Steve, and Dan will bring us the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel, the kingdom and healing, every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. 
Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are this. First, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Timothy, <coughs> and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us say together the words of the Apostles' Creed and confirm our belief. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now for our our sermon hymn will be uh, um, On Eagle's Wings, uh, number 727. You may be seated. <laughs>
on angels' wings. He shall bear you up. You know, I, several weeks ago, when I was asked to do this, I, I came to the church and I got the service folder for today. And I was struck as I looked at the cover of the service folder, you shall be my treasured possessions. You know, we think of ourselves as we are certainly children of God. We are followers of Christ. But do we think ourselves of ourselves as treasured possessions? You know, that's really kind of interesting. And uh, if we read verses 4 or 5, if you didn't catch it, um, when Steve read these words, you yourself have seen what I did in Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you fully obey me and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possessions, although the whole world is mine. Treasured possession. You know, I, you have to wonder, if we stood on a street corner today and asked people, tell me about your most treasured possession, I wonder what kind of answers we'd get. You know, I, I, I think there'd probably be a variety of answers. Some people might say things like, oh, my health. You know, maybe they've gone through a trial and, and, and their health. Maybe they would talk about something that they inherited, something very special, maybe priceless that they inherited, and that it's in a safe at home someplace. Um, and some people might simply be a pure attachment to stuff. And, oh, the treasured possessions that, that we have. But I suspect that most would be a connection to something of family or love or value beyond pure money. Something with that foundation of love. Not necessarily horrible, but not the things of real and lasting value. Uh, I, think, I think it's particularly appropriate that we're celebrating Father's Day today. Uh, with this text and this question. Our roles as fathers, I think, are the most important roles that we can go through in our lives, the roles that we can play in our lives. Um, now, our roles as fathers certainly are different than the role of mother, but both are very significant and very important in the lives of our children. Um, I remember sp smiling as Pastor Gallagher talked about, um, spoke of his mother on Mother's Day and the powerful influence he saw in her. But I've also spent time with Pastor Gallagher and I've listened to him talk about his father, you know, and, and you know, a pretty good-sized, powerful man. And, uh, and then I've, Pastor Gallagher, as he's been working to help his son, We've had conversations, and I see the incredible love that he has for his son as he's trying to help his son through these situations. So our children are our precious possessions, treasured possessions. I remember personally how overwhelmed I was when the doctors placed my children in my hand after they were born. A picture I, I will never forget. But, of course, I was young then. And I, I thought about it in <clears throat> recent years. I wish I knew then what I know now. You know, we um, were young, and, and, and these children, of course, unfortunately, don't come with owner's manuals. And so we struggle a little bit with that one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Well, and what do they do? They begin by spitting up all over us. <laughs> and, and, and then, of course, there's the always challenge of diaper changing. Of course, they have no control over that, and, and it's not really aimed at us, although sometimes it can be. Um, but, but then they begin to talk. 
And the first word that they begin to use a lot, no, exactly. And they use it with some defiance. And that word no is only the beginning of defiant talking back. Um, they need independence, and they begin to walk, and the independence is a big deal. And, and you know, we're trying to get their attention, and they're walking the other way. And they learn to find ways to resist, and resist almost anything. <laughs> it's just, as they get older, we try to guide them, and we direct them so they don't make the same mistakes that we made, because we were good at that, too. But they have to learn, don't they? They have to try, and they have to do their own thing. And sometimes they do it the hard way. So they make wrong decisions, bad decisions, dumb decisions, and we just shake our heads, and we wrap our arms around them, and we love them in the middle of all of that. And that's pretty neat. And that's the blessings of being fathers and, and mothers. Well, in a way, it sounds like the nation of Israel. Uh, the nation of Israel had, then, had done nothing to des deserving of being called um, treasured possessions. They were, frankly, something of a pain in the neck. Um, they grumbled, complained, defied, and pretty much spit up on everything that God did for them. The term stiff-necked people was pretty well deserved for the nation of Israel. And yet these words, these words were God's words to Moses. God was having this conversation with Moses about what he was to share with the nation of Israel. Once again, you yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me and fully keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And then he added these words, these are the things you are to share with the nation of Israel. This is what you're going to have to go and tell them. Well, the story ends, of course, with Moses going to the nation of Israel, and he shared this message, and he told them what God said. And um, the people answered, and they said, all the, the wor that the Lord has said we will do. We're good with this. All that God has said, we're, we're going to do this. So, if you think about it, God chose them much as we would choose to adopt a child. We make the choice and we adopt the child and we love the child that we have, that we have chosen. And pure love, a father's love. But God added something that is often missed. Being chosen was not something for them to be arrogant about. And he makes it very clear as he adds these words, all the world is mine, and you shall be to me as a kingdom of priests to everyone. Being chosen is an honor and it is not something to be arrogant about. You know, we think back as, as children, being chosen. Think about it. You were in school, and they were picking sides for something in gym class, and you were anxious to be chosen. You wanted to be chosen. You were playing, or you moved into a neighborhood, a new neighborhood, and you didn't know anybody and some neighbor child came over and said, you know, can we play together? You were chosen. And that was, a, that was a neat thing. It is a beautiful thing to be chosen by God. 
or to be chosen for a purpose, chosen for privilege. But there can be problems. Sometimes a, a group of people can be chosen to do something that excludes everyone else, and it's, they're singled out. But that's not what's happening here. What's happening here is God is saying to these people, you have a job to do. You need to remain holy, and you need to tell the world about me. You shall be to me a kingdom of priests. And it's interesting because this is the only place in the Old Testament where these words are used. But it's not the only place that we hear them. So, as God's holy treasure, special treasure, Israel has been chosen to be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, and that means, again, that Israel was chosen for others. Well, where have we heard that before? And we have, absolutely. Peter used the same exact words as a charge to us. To the Christian church. In 1 Peter 2 verse 9, he says these words, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his glorious light. We are chosen. We are a special people. We are God's treasured possessions. Our vocation, that is the vocation of the church, is to be a priest. You feel like a priest? That's kind of an ominous term that, you know, we are, we are all called to be priests. Um, <clears throat> what does it sound like? And what does it mean that we are called to be priests? Listen to this. To be a bridge between people and God. To be a witness. To tell others of the goodness of God. Specifically, that means to speak to others for God and also to speak to God for others. Sounds like prayer. Simply put, we are to witness and to pray. This past week I read a, read a story about a professor that we, some of you may have heard of. He's passed away about 25 years ago. His name is Leo Bascalia. I'm not seeing any recognition particularly. Uh, he was known as Dr. Love. He wrote and he taught about love. He was an interesting guy. I've read some of his work. The story would, went like something like this. At the beginning of each semester, he would give the students an assignment. An assignment to write a paper answering the question, what would you do if you had five days to live? And uh, he would later write that those papers were really pretty interesting. He got some pretty interesting feedback in those papers, things that they wanted to, would say to people, things that they would accomplish. And he really got the students thinking. When he got the papers back, he would not grade them. He would simply write at the top of the paper, why don't you do it now? What are you waiting for? That's our challenge, I think, isn't it? We know who we are, and we know we are, what we are called to do as God's people. So, if God only gave us five days to live, what would we do? I imagine we would be talking to God about loved ones and talking to those around us about God. 
but it's not easy, is it? Sometimes, as we get older, I think that gives us perhaps a little bit of an edge on that. We become a little less intimidated, a little less worried about not fitting in if we say something, and so we get a little boldness. And then we hear the last words that Israel said. They said to Moses, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. We're up for this. We're going to do this. That's what, what they're going to do. They were ready to enter the covenant of the one who had initiated it. And you, re, you have to remember here that God did not say, if you agree to do this, I will choose you. He said, I have chosen you for this and will treasure you for carrying it out. And that's the message. But you've got to think about, why did God choose them? I mean, they weren't. Israel was not a powerful nation. They were not a picture of prosperity and achievement. The election was not due to the merit of the people, but the grace of God. He had chosen them. Listen to the words here from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. The Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest among all peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your ancestors that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of the Pharaoh in Egypt. So it was not a matter of being obedient as a prerequisite. Rather, God would use his people for the sake of the world, only when they were obedient and reliable. Obedient response was possible for Israel, and it is possible for anyone, for all of us, in response to God's prior act of grace. So how about us? How about the church? How about this church? You know, <clears throat> people made, or Peter made it clear that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his special people. We are not a big church. We are not highly influential. And besides that, we see churches across the world struggling these days. And we wonder what's going on. And, and then on top of that, we're caught up in a world gone mad where good is bad and, and truth is silenced and everything seems to be upside down. And it troubles us, and we worry about it. We go, what in the world is going on in this craziness? How can we possibly make a difference? Seems impossible, doesn't it? But it's not. How about this? Jesus sent out 12. 12 people. That was the plan. 12 people. Go tell the world about me. Spread the good news. Yeah, they ran into some trouble, but they got the job done pretty well. And the troubles that they ran to are still around us. But God is good, and God is in charge, and God will not be mocked. We might be small, but we can make a difference. We are chosen, and we are sent, and we are his treasured possessions. We are a royal priesthood called to talk to others and to talk to about those that God puts in our center of influence. Trust in God, following Christ, and relying on the Holy Spirit will give us, each one of us, 
the power to reach a hurting world and make a difference. And that is the truth. Amen. We bring our offerings to to the Lord. Gracious, loving Father, Lord, we, Father, we bring these gifts to you that you might use them to, in some way, make a difference in the world, that you might use them to uh, reach a world that's hurting, that, that needs you, that the world might see your grace and your love through the gifts that you bring to us. Amen. I, would, I will pray, and then at the close of the prayer, I will ask us all to rise for the Lord's Prayer. Um, <clears throat> you know, and I think, once again, I, as I pray, the, um, I think of the fathers today, um, and we are all at different places at fathers, and some of us are able to be with families, and some of us are not able to be with families, but... Uh, we, we are blessed as fathers. Um, I think of also of, of this church as we pray that, you know, we're, uh, uh, we are truly blessed. Uh, we pray that we would receive names so that we can call a full-time pastor shortly. But, uh, we are a blessed congregation. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole church of God and in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you treasure your people for Christ's sake and you gave us your commandments to guide our ways. Grant that we, Father, redeemed by his blood, may do all he has spoken. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, send forth laborers to make known the gospel. Father, use us to make known the gospel of your kingdom in Christ Jesus. Prosper the labor of your pastors, missionaries, and all church workers that people may hear, believe, and praise you. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, righteous Father, from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named. Give your grace to the fathers and sons of your church. Inspire them by your own example and the example of your beloved son to be perfectly united in faith, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen.
Lord, we pray for we pray for our nation. We pray for the world that all leaders come to a place where they see your hand and make make laws and judge laws accordingly, justly, according to your word. We pray that they have to receive the wisdom and strength to fully carry out their duties. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we pray this morning, we lift up those in our hearts. Uh, we don't certainly have all of the names here that of those who may be in our hearts, but you know them. And so we think this morning of Gordon, we think of Roger and Paula and Matt. We pray for Jerry Olson and Aaron's father as he was placed on hospice. And Father, again, as we talked, we, we pray for this church and all who are here. We pray for the people up at Snyder that we ministered to yesterday or on Friday. We pray for those of your father, those in, in uh, facilities like that across this town and across this nation, that, and we pray for those who would serve them, that they would be gentle and kind and feel your presence as they serve. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, blessed Lord, through Moses you called a people to yourself, and from them you delivered up your own Son to be a Savior. By his sufferings and death he has received us sinners from our sin. By his resurrection he has released us from the fear of death. Help us live as your people, doing the good works for which we were created, and praying with confidence the petitions and supplications of our hearts through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Lord, now we rise as we join together our hearts and pray the words that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make the, may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you peace. Amen. And amen. In the closing hymn, you, you may be seated for the closing hymn, Lift High the Cross.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. I don't know. It was up there, but he didn't go there.